has the right mindset. It hasn't got the mindset of the that should be in the in the godly. But they see the world as it is. They examine the world. They think about the world. They think it over, mull it over, and they see what it is, and are able to tell others, you know, that this has happened in the past. This is happening now. It's a repeat of history. Man is this, man is that. <coughs> be, be careful. <coughs> One me. <coughs> Our fathers did it. I know my parents did it. And they were ungodly. But they were mature. They understood things as they are. And so should we. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> and so it should be that we should judge righteous judgment we should indeed as Christ continues on to say he deals with the hypocrisy the double mindedness the double standards of people and then he goes on beware of the false prophets verse 15 of Matthew 7 beware of the false prophets yeah Liars and deceivers, beware. Oh, but hang on a minute, you said do not judge, that you be not judged, there's the Arminian, oh dear. Is Christ contradicting himself? Is he a liar? Is he a hypocrite? Is he a false prophet? Because I can tell you now, Mr. Arminian, when Christ says, judge not that ye be not judged, then follows it on with an explanation that the judgment that these people may come unto is <clears throat> unrighteous judgment, hypocritical judgment. He then does not, therefore, undermine what he is saying in verse 15. Beware of the false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But in will they or ravening wolves? Oh, don't you love them? Oh, come on, Christ. They're saying, <clears throat> you should love them. You shouldn't be condemning them. You should try and win them. Hmm? This is what they're doing. They're taking the Lord, their maker, and they're treating him as less than themselves. Oh, you should be winning them to yourself. They treat, again, their maker less than themselves. That, in fact, that he is a Socinian. He's impotent. He's impotent. That's what the Armenian mindset is, because they hate Christ. They detest they revile Christ. They're ravening wolves. Hmm? Ye shall know them by their fruits. Ye shall know them by their fruits. I tell you what, Mr. Arminian. You won't go this far. You will stick with verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. You will not go for the whole passage. Because if you did that. You're calling Christ a sinner. And that means you've no salvation. Well, you haven't in the first place. It's all commitment. It's a nominal Christianity you have. The point is that Christ has committed sin. According to you. Because what's the truth? Judge not. And then he says judge. That's sinful. Because to be contrary is sinful. Double mindedness is sinfulness. Sinfulness is the opposite of being perfect. It's absolutely stoically perfect, as perfect as can be. Upright.
Do you know what the government says? And people say? Proud as they are in their evil. I'm on a learning curve. Oh, <laughs> Bent as a nine bob note, are you? What? Well, think for a moment. What's a curve? What's a learning curve? Come on. It goes up. Up. Ooh, down. Bang. Back to where you started. Bent. A curve is bent. We Christians are upright. Straightened. As we go along from being babes in Christ, upwards and onwards, towards the city of God that we are aiming for, we should grow in grace and knowledge of the truth, making us more solid and upright in our thoughts, in our ways, in our manners, and whilst on that journey upwards in the schoolhouse of God that we continue on in and shall never leave, we see this world as it is. And we become to detest this world. And we rebuke this world for its sin and its iniquity. We detest it. And we see these Arminians out here. These blackguards. And we have nothing to do with them. We will not embrace them. We will not embrace them. But there are those. Who do embrace them. Embraced Romanism. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. They're embracing Romanism. Armenianism is Romanism in a different form. And that is righteous judgment. Hmm? The strong man, says Paul. Meat belongeth to the strong man. Hey? To them that are of full age. Note in Hebrews when Paul is talking to the Hebrews. That strong meat belongeth to those that are of full age. There is an age, a full age, a mature age. Maturity. When all the fruit on the tree is present. The fruit of discernment, the fruit of judgment, the fruit of charity, the fruit of understanding, the fruit of intellect, the fruit of right reason, the fruit of knowledge, and so on and so on and so on, all present in the life that makes the mature person a pillar in the society of God and in the society of the natural man those who can be leaned upon trusted to give right reason because their judgment has been exercised they judge the scriptures, compare the scriptures, judge this, judge that, comparing scripture with scripture, line upon line, here a little, there a little. It's all an exercise with the intellect, the understanding, the mind set. Always learning. And not like the hypocrite. Not like your government minister and all those beggars up there, those dogs. That do not come to the truth forever learning. We should be ever learning and coming to the truth. And the more we get into the truth and learn the truth as it is in Christ, the more light we, we gain of a lot more things. That's what it is. Our understanding becomes enlightened. And gradually the whole 
of what we should see becomes obvious. We come to that position in life, or should do, that we are of full age. We are the mature person, adult. What it really means to be adult. Adult isn't age. It isn't a number. It's a position. Hmm? And condition of the mind. And it's no good the world saying, oh, this 15-year-old, this 18-year-old, he's, he's older than his, than his years, and blah, blah, blah. And then you go on. No, they're not. It's like the seed, is it not? That grew up. Shut up! And as soon as affliction beat down on it, it had gone. Because there was no substance. The only substance is growing gradually, gracefully, knowledgeably in the Lord. By looking out secondarily to the world and looking. Why is that? Why is that there? Why are they saying that? And it's always, 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 always questions we should ask. Always, we should be those people asking questions. Not like the world that nods on like donkeys. We should ask questions. We should be inquisitive. And that's the way to learn. And that's the way to mature. Asking questions. It's like a child, is it not? We have a child there and they ask a question. Fair enough. That's what they should do. Everybody should be asking questions. Questions, questions, questions. It's a brilliant world where people are asking questions. Isn't it? Hey? Isn't it a joy to be asked a question? It is. It's what's missing in this world. And a child will say to their parents, Why is this? And a good, reasonable parent will say, well, it's because of this son or, or daughter. It's because of this. Okay. Or, or, oh, I don't know. That's a very good question you've asked. Hmm. I'll tell you what. I'll go and look it up. Find out and I'll tell you. Now, what's that saying to that child? That is, first of all, saying that the mother and the father love that child. Because they're attending to that child. They're concerned with that child. They want to answer that child's question. Okay? Secondly, if they have to go and look it up, they're telling that child, look it up. Don't be lazy, just don't pass by it. I'm going to look it up. When they look it up, who profits? Secondarily, the parent. Because they've looked it up. They themselves have got the answer. And they can give that answer to others. How can we give anything to society unless we learn ourselves? You see, and the child is encouraged to look it up. And the child is blessed of their parents for having that information. And the child is encouraged to ask questions. If you dismiss a child and say, oh, it doesn't matter, the child will give up asking questions and he'll live a life. Generally, not asking questions, not learning, therefore, properly as they should. Some will, will learn. But there's an awful lot out there who are being discouraged and not encouraged to ask questions and to use their judgment. Arminianism does not want any of us, be Christian or not, to use judgment. They sit in judgment over the world. They dictate 
to the world. This is all. This is Romanism. This is the spirit of Romanism. Test the spirits to see if they are of God. Examine rather the spirits to see if they are of God. And it's the spirit, spirits, the spiritual side. Okay. John 4, isn't it? Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know the spirit, ye know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Okay, verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Hmm? Spirit, spirit, spirit all the time. It's what comes out of the mouth. This begins with the heart. The mouth speaketh what's in the heart. Now, those who say that Christ here has not come in the flesh, spirit... Remember, it's in a spiritual realm. Arminianism says that Christ doesn't come in the flesh. That's judgment. That's proper judgment. We judge that they are saying that Christ has not come in the flesh. They will say Christ has come in the flesh. And so we have a verbal game of tennis with them. And what we say to them is describe your Christ. Hmm? Well, he's one of commitments. This is your Christ. His commitments. He's non-judgmental. He loves everybody. He's going to reign for a thousand years as some of your sect. And they be defeated by a greater power called the devil. That's your Christ. And that, of course, he was accidentally put to death by the Jews. That isn't the Christ of Scripture. That's your Christ. The Christ of the Scripture. Therefore hasn't come. Because you've presented another Christ. You've not presented the Christ of Scripture. Therefore, by default, the Christ of Scripture, again, hasn't come. You've created a Christ that has come and has brought a different teaching and a different way of salvation. You see how crafty and subtle the devil is in that religion of Arminianism. Hmm? We need to exercise our senses to discern both good and evil, do we not? As Paul says to the Hebrews, hmm? chapter 5, verse 14, to discern between good and evil. Woe unto you if ye do not put a difference between light and darkness, sweet and sour, good and evil, righteousness and unrighteousness. Woe unto you. What have we got in this world? That should be exercised in this world amongst all other things but judgment. Judgment in all things. Again, we come back to the practicalities. We wouldn't have what we are surrounded by if there was no judgment. Of if this works or that works, that is judgment being exercised by the natural man. You know. God lays down this fact of judgment from the very beginning. Adam. What happened to Adam? Did he make the right judgment? No, he didn't. 
No, he didn't. He suspended judgment, so to speak. No, he stood up, stood there with Eve. Serpent was going on. That Arminian popish serpent going on in work. Abusing God, misrepresenting God, defaming God, slandering God, slandering his own maker, because evil is evil. And Adam stood there and he must have thought, oh, I can't be, I, I can't be held accountable. I'll have an excuse. If all goes wrong, I'll blame the woman, the preacher, in the pulpit here. <coughs> Might as well have erected a, a physical pulpit. Oh well, he came under her teaching. She came under the teaching of the devil. And he came under her teaching. He took of the fruit of the woman. Aye, he didn't go to the tree. He took, took of her. Women's lip. And he thought he could get away with it. Blame the woman. Oh, he was curious. He was curious, over curious. You know, some things we should stand back on and indeed walk away from. There is a limit. And we should know our limits. Hmm? Oh, ah, the woman was that mediator, that preacher. And then afterwards what happened? Adam blamed God, his creator. Woman, the woman that thou gavest me, not me. I wasn't to blame. It was the